Welcome to our second edition of, Nation, of Support Local Art, the talk series supported by Nations Trust Bank Private Banking. In this conversation, we will discuss the role of curator in the Sri Lankan art landscape. And um, we have with us today four established curators. And in this conversation, we will discuss uh, key projects um, in an effort to define this role in Sri Lanka today. I will begin the conversation by introducing our panelists. Shamini Pereira, the Chief Curator of the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art in Sri Lanka, founder and director of Raking Leaves Publishing, and co-founder of the Archive of Sri Lankan Contemporary Art Design and Architecture. Hasini Haputantri, independent researcher, museologist, and curator. Shari De Silva, curator of um, Jeffrey Baba Trust Art and Archival Collections. Sunday Pan and architect, sorry, and architect, Sunday Pandi, artist and uh, assistant curator of the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art, Sri Lanka, a member of the Packet Collective, co-curator of the House of Kau Residency. I would like to begin the conversation um, with you, Shamini, um, at a partic particular moment uh, in time in 1994, when you curated an exhibition at the National Gallery in Colombo. And this exhibition, I think, is a really interesting point to begin this conversation, as I think it really uh, begins a very interesting path for curating in Sri Lanka. Of course, your work being a very important reference um, in the role of curator as a curator was established, a Sri Lankan curator was established internationally. But I think this particular exhibition bringing us forward to your work today as chief, chief curator of the museum, um, shows a very interesting path in this role that you have dedicated your work to. Can you um, give us a little bit more information on that particular exhibition and walk us through your work as curator since? Thank you, Saskia. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this um, conversation today with uh, Sandev, with Hassani and with Shairi. Um, I'd love it if Marsha could share the, the image, um, which is, I have to confess, the only image I have of the exhibition that Saskia is referring to, which was the first ever exhibition that I curated. And it's, um, it's a photograph that I just came across, in fact, this, this weekend while sorting out um, books and um, getting ready to throw them away, in fact, and then this fell out. And um, to my surprise, I realized that it was a photograph that I had taken in 1993, and I was 24 or 23, no, I was 23, so I'm behind the camera, and it shows you a picture which in the middle ground you have Thainwara to the right, Chandragupta Thainwara, and Jagath Veerasinghe to the left, um, and in front of Jagath is, is a woman called Sisi, who was taking classes at Varfa, and this was the first um, venue where Varfa began. Um, and in the background there is, um, I think, Sunil um, Vijay Sirawadana, I, I think, um, who was very involved with Varfa at the, at the outset. Um, so I'm showing you this, uh, this, this photograph as, as a starting point to talk about the show that I curated in 1994. Um, the, 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 the image was taken um, in 1993 in the following year, new approaches in contemporary Sri Lanka and art opened. And it was an exhibition that I worked really closely with um, Jagath and Thainora on. And in so many ways, I suppose it was paradigmatic for me in, in terms of working with artists. And Jagath and Thenu really shaped and formed who I, who I became as, as a curator and, and the artists that I then went on to work with, not just in Sri Lanka. Um, but as I say, it was the only, this is the only record of that exhibition. Um, what, um, what, I can tell you about is that, what I can tell you about it is that it opened in 1994. And it opened at the National Art Gallery. And, and at that time, I was, I was very keen for it to open 
at a government institution. Um, I think at that time in particular, I was very uh, taken up with the idea that there was um, a, a museum called the National Art Gallery and that there was a category of national art somewhere in existence. Um, and I wanted it to be there um, because it was also a place up until then where I had gone um, to see so many different kinds of exhibitions um, and funerals and things that had nothing most of the time to do with art. So it was, it was a bit of an um, interesting conversation because I have to mention this exhibition was funded by the British Council and they were really keen to have it in their premises. And the person that in fact gave me the funding for it was Ramali Mochandani. And Ramali conceded and said, okay, go ahead, have it at the National Art Gallery. And it was an exhibition that included six artists. There was Jagath um, Thainawara, there was uh, Kingsley Gunatilaka, there was Tilak Samarawakrama, um, there was Lucky Sena Nayaka, Tissadi Alvis, and um, Dravinka Madavella. I think that's everybody in the list. Um, and I suppose what it was trying to do was set out to look at putting together artists in the case of Chandragupta Thenora and Jagath, who hadn't really normally been seen as artists in the same way that a figure like Lucky Senanaika had. So it was it was no more than that, just trying to really bring bring together new approaches. That's quite literally what it was in, in how we saw art and artists. Um, I have no idea how many people came to see it. Um, audience didn't really matter then. Um, it's something I've learned to, to, it's mattered more and more and more. And, and, and it led me in fact, when um, much later in my curatorial work to, to set up in fact, raking leaves because I was so interested in audience. But this exhibition, um, I, I can only recall how we had people coming in who included the army because um, I remember one of the works by Tissadi Alvis was using a, um, a, a toy AK-47 as, as, a, as a mobile. So they were very intrigued by this and, and they kept kind of coming in one after the other to, to look at it. Um, I think perhaps what was important for me in this exhibition, other than it being the first time I'd curated, was, was the people that um, I came into contact with. So other than people like Ramali, um, on the funding side, there was an amazing man who was in Colombo then called Bernard, Steinrucker and and Bernard went on he was at the Deutsche Bank and he literally opened his checkbook for the bank and said how much money do you want he was just so so engaged with trying to get something off the ground in Sri Lanka which was then um really at you know um uh, we were we were in the midst of a war then um in 1994 um and there were people very much like him who were just opening checkbooks and writing checks to 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 get this show off the ground and to them and their support that's something that um i really want to want to pay um homage to here um there are other people though involved in this exhibition as well um and that was the office of, of an architect called Jeffrey Bauer. And I remember knocking on the door of Jeffrey Bauer's office and I didn't really know who he was. I knew he was an architect and I sat down in his office and explained what I was trying to do. Um, and I wasn't very concise in those days. So I probably spoke for far too long. And I remember him saying um, someone's name and, and this person appeared from the back office and uh, Mr. Bauer said, please help this girl. And that person was Chana Daswatha. And Chana quickly got on board. And in fact, when we designed the show, what the architects did is they reused or they used plywood that was standing there waiting to um, kit out somebody's swimming pool. So they brought this plywood on board and, and we, we, we created a sort of enclosed opening to the one wing of the National Art Gallery. And I remember Albert Dharmasiri coming to the show and saying it, it felt like a nightclub. Um, which I guess was a compliment in, in a kind of backhanded way. Um, but of course, Chana and his architects were really pivotal to the execution of this exhibition. Um, and even at the opening, I remember we had J.R. Jawadana um, come as the officiate um, to open the exhibition. And 
we asked him to come, in fact, uh, because much of the work in the show, um, in terms of the work that Jagath was showing in Kingsley and uh, Theonora, was looking at what had happened during 83. And um, he was in power at that time. Um, what I didn't realize though, and, and it was right at the, um, uh, the beginning of what was going to be a, a change of government is that Mrs. Van, uh, Mrs. Van der Nijken was about to come into power. So that, that was the other second uh, possibility as, as a guest of honor, because that was how people did it then. Um, but I remember at the opening, we um, were also, you know, very um, unprepared. Um, no one really knew what they were doing. Um, it was all hands on deck. Um, I had paint all over one part of my arm and I was wearing a sari and it was the wrong side of the sari and it was all sort of down one arm. But I remember Amela Demel coming in with a beautifully laundered and ironed white um, tablecloth, which she very properly put over the table that was where we had catalogues, because the only other thing that was actually a record um, and produced was a catalogue. Um, so we had this beautiful table um, with a with a perfect white tablecloth. Um, I suppose I'd end by saying, you know, it was it was pivotal for me, this exhibition, because of the relationships and particularly with artists. Um, with people who I've gone on to work with, uh, Jagat Virasinghe and Tissa de Alves were two of the artists in the show and they went on to, to be artists that I chose to be part of the Asia Pacific Triennial in 1999. Um, but it was this show in fact, um, which I, I really you know didn't quite know what I was doing, but um, I, I applied afterwards um, from Sri Lanka to uh, a place which was offering a curatorial studies program and it was the Whit at the Whitney, it was called the Whitney Independent Studies Program. And to my surprise, um, I got a letter and they offered me a place. Um, I wasn't able to take it because I couldn't pay my way, but um, I put in an application on the, on the back of that to the Royal College of Art and um, I was accepted um, with, with sponsorship or with scholarships. Um, and the Royal College of Art was, was one of the places that was in London starting to teach curatorial studies. And, and I was the third intake. So um, it was really something, I suppose, when I look back at this exhibition that paved the way for me to, to go on and, and study something that obviously, as you've said, I've, I've not really, you know, um, deterred from um, in quite a boring old way, but, it's also something to say that I, I've always, I think, felt that my place of work was Sri Lanka. Um, and working here, working with artists from here. Um, and over the years, that, that's taken very many different forms. Um, so yeah, I think to tie up perhaps with where I am now um, and trying to establish something in the form of the museum um, feels like a sort of, yeah, coming, coming, coming along through a journey that um, I, I perhaps, yeah, always, always wished for. And um, it's wonderful to be able to be in a position, I suppose, that you can do what you're, what you're very passionate about. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave it there um, in terms of talking about that first exhibition. Thank you, Sharmini. I think um, as you explained, um, your passion for, for what you do is something that, that is no doubt shared by all the panelists here um, and why I'm particularly excited to have you all together today because there are so many cross sections uh, amongst all of your work. And uh, one thing you explained was how you, um, you know, began the designing of this first exhibition, even though it was a very at a very early stage. And um, Hassini, in, in, in you know, researching your work and your motivation behind studying museology, um, you focused a lot on the reasoning behind um, developing a greater understanding of you know even designing spaces, but how important that is in communicating something. And I think generally in the role of curator, we often think about putting artworks together, but not necessarily um, understanding how space also plays such an important role. And I think that's really something that is interesting to talk about um, in relation to your work specifically, in relation to all